Professor H. Srikant, Department of Political Science, Northeastern Hill University. Madam Principal, Dr. Sen, Shillong Commerce College, my dear colleagues, my dear students, good morning and welcome to Shillong Commerce College. Remembering Dr. Ambedkar on his 130th birthday, we are privileged to listen to his life struggle and relevance of Dr. Ambedkar in today's society. <clears throat> I am Nyaiba Maungshi Shimre, the host for the day, an assistant professor in the Department of Political Science, Shillong Commerce College. And as we move ahead with the program, I would like to hand over this part of the program to Sir Mandre to welcome and to introduce our speaker, our resource person. Thank you so much. I give the time to Sir Mandre. A uh, very good uh, morning, um, it's noon now, so very good afternoon to everyone. A warm welcome to mm -hmm. Professor mm -hmm. Srikant, for to our honorable guest speaker for today's event. So before we start, uh, I, I would just like to give a warm welcome to all the participants of today's event, uh, online event. Obviously, we wanted to make it uh, offline, but uh, considering the circumstances, we have to resort to uh, an online mode. Maybe next time we will have a, a bigger mm -hmm. event celebrating Dr. Ambedkar uh, in a more grand fashion. So uh, for today, I would just like to uh, give us a short welcome to all, uh, to first and foremost, to Professor Srikant, uh, professor, of, uh, uh, professor in the Department of Political Science in Nehu, Northeastern Hill University, who, who is a very uh, experienced professor, has more almost 30 years of experience in research and teaching, if I'm not mistaken, and also whose area of ex expertise includes uh, you know, a wide range of subjects, including political theory, uh, you know, ethnicity, border issues, uh, and even uh, a lot of uh, Northeast politics also. And uh, he will be, uh, you know, he has really been a part of Nehu for a very long time, and he has taken up a lot of administrative roles, uh, including be uh, being the, you know, he was uh, also the head of department of the political science department. So, We'll be hearing from her, from Sir, right? Who who was also, uh, let me add, uh, our teacher, right? Both me and Sir Shimri's teacher in in masters. Uh, so we have uh, we he uh, he holds a very special place in uh, you know because he has taught us a lot and he has introduced us to a lot of areas and uh, actually showed us you know a lot of different dimensions to the study of political science. So without further ado, uh, I welcome you all, right? Uh, I, work, I welcome you all, the principal, the vice principals, respected uh, vice principals, um, uh, uh, Ms. Josephine Bla, as well as Dr. Sonita Hongwir, the, the different teachers, uh, both commerce and arts of Shillong Commerce College. And most importantly, we welcome you, the students, who we hope that this talk will enlighten you regarding the life uh, and the you know the struggles as well as his influence the influence of this great man, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Right. So without further ado, I uh, I give back uh, the this uh, to the host, uh, uh, Mr. Shimbe. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, you go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, sure, sir. You can take over the time, sir. Uh, the time I is yours, see. sir. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. I'll just switch off. Uh... Yeah, it's 
Uh, yeah, I can take over now. Yeah, sure, sir, sure, sir. Yeah, that's good. Uh, at the outset, uh, let me congratulate uh, Mantre Pasa and uh, Shimbri for taking the initiative to organize the uh, 130th uh, birth anniversary of uh, Dr. Ambedkar. Thank you, sir. You know, in history, we have different kinds of uh, people who made their impact. Some of these uh, great men, they are recognized and revered and admired during their own lifetime. So we have many people in our own country, people like Gandhi, Nehru, Patel, or elsewhere, people like Abraham Lincoln, Mandela, they all attained fame during their own lifetime. They were admired and uh, uh, they were very popular uh, among the people at the point of time. But there are some others who are little known during their own time. Not that they are not unknown, but uh, they are not so popular. It is only in course of time, after several decades, uh, uh, their importance, uh, the people come to know. You know, Karl Marx was one such. There were very few during his own time who knew his name. But uh, Marx became popular a uh, few decades after his death. I say in the context of India, Ambedkar is one such person. He was no doubt popular to some extent uh, during his time. Yes, he, people, some sections of the people, the Dalits and intelligentsia, they know about him, but he was uh, not so popular and so admired uh, uh, like uh, Gandhi or Nehru at that point of time. He had many kinds of defeats uh, in his lifetime. He was not even elected to the provincial legislature. Uh, he became a uh, uh, law minister, but he could not uh, uh, give shape to the thoughts. Uh, so what he introduced as Hindu code bill was rejected by his own colleagues. And he was uh, frustrated uh, uh, in some ways during his own period and that he thought that uh, he cannot bring about a change in uh, the Hindu society and he converted himself to uh, Buddhism. So these are facts which we know. But it is only after his death uh, that the impact of his uh, actions, his ideas, the people began to realize. Now after so many decades after his death, now we can say that uh, Dr. Ambedkar is known to almost everyone. Uh, in this country. And he is uh, more popular than Gandhi. Hmm? Now, everyone, all political parties of uh, all, uh, you can say, ideological spectrums appreciate uh, uh, Ambedkar and take his name. Many universities streets are uh, named after him. And you can see his uh, idols erected in different kinds of uh, 
in different places in the parliament uh, in the assemblies uh, in the chaurastas uh, uh, in the uh, parks everywhere you can see uh, the idols of uh, um, dr ambedkar and he has become a kind of a demigod to some and every politician takes his name huh eh? so that we also talk about him uh, with great reverence but uh, how many of us really understood him how many of us know his uh, thoughts his ideas his struggles huh eh? many people to who take his name knew very little about him now politicians use the name of mahatma uh, sorry dr ambedkar more to fetch his the dalit oaths they knew very little about him they have little some of them may not have even sympathy for his ideas and ideals but they still talk at the same time there is another section which uh, almost made him a kind of a uh, god and uh, they cannot tolerate any kind of criticism or uh, rightful appreciation of uh, the ideas and contributions of uh, ambedkar in my talk uh, i avoid both these extremes i want to explain to you the real struggles that ambedkar waged during his lifetime hmm? and the importance of his thoughts and the relevance of uh, his ideas in a uh, uh, contemporary india hmm? this is uh, will be my focus so it is not uh, a talk of uh, a uh, you can say uh, one who is an ambedkarite no i am not an ambedkarite in that sense of the term but i am an academician who looks at uh, ambedkar uh, in a positive light uh, and take lessons from his uh, ideas and struggles so it is in that context uh, uh, you have to see it uh, uh, as a more an uh, the intervention of an academician rather than a politician who he is interested in uh, talking about ambedkar uh, without knowing about him now let me come to his uh, uh, thing whenever we look at any great uh, evaluate any great person we should understand uh, the historical context in which he or she emerged you know that dr ambedkar was born in the year 1891 and you know that was uh, the colonial era where india was ruled by the british and the british virtually enslaved exploited and oppressed india and they were ex uh, uh, exercising authority hmm, over crowds of people but at the same time i should also tell that this uh, colonial rule opened up certain opportunities certain opportunities uh, for certain sections of the people to develop even including certain sections of the people who were marginalized uh, in the pre colonial era who had little voice it is not that uh, the british wanted to do good to them but their own colonial interest demanded that they introduce uh, uh, modern liberal education they uh, 
opened up jobs for different communities. And that is something which went in favor of uh, certain uh, marginalized uh, and hitherto oppressed communities, whether it is uh, the lower caste or the Dalits or the women. Hmm? So here, uh, it, it, you have to see that is one important change which took place, uh, which uh, enabled uh, persons like uh, Ambedkar to emerge um, on the national scene. Then you, that was also the period uh, when against uh, the foreign domination, the nationalist ideas were emerging and freedom struggle was taking shape. And, uh, but this freedom struggle was emphasizing more on liberation of India from the foreign yoke. But it did not give much of emphasis on socio-cultural issues. You know, in Europe, when there was a fight for against feudalism, that fight was uh, both a political fight and also socio-cultural fight. But in case of India, the leaders who led this movement, uh, they emphasized more on liberating India from the foreign yoke, but did not concentrate on socio-cultural issues. And that is actually what led to development of autonomous socio-cultural uh, movements for identity and self-respect. Uh -huh. That is something which you can see. That, so alongside uh, the freedom struggle, you also see the movements, uh, socio-cultural movements, uh, uh, which have as uh, their goal identity and issue of uh, justice and self-respect. And this is another thing that we have to keep in mind. Hmm? Then we should also say that uh, liberal education spread the ideas of uh, liberalism, democracy, secularism, and nationalism uh, in the minds of uh, the people. But at the same time, the victory of the Soviet Union I mean, the Russian victory of the Russian Revolution in 1917, uh, that also brought into focus uh, the socialist ideas. Uh, so the socialist ideas also began to influence uh, large sections of the people in India. All these different changes, uh, which were taking place in India, in particular, and the world in general, that is something which we have to keep in mind when we discuss uh, Dr. Ambedkar. Hmm? Now I will come to the basic things, uh, uh, biographical details of uh, Ambedkar and his educational pursuits. Hmm? You know that he belongs to Mahar caste, which was considered as a, you know, you can say untouchable caste. Fortunately, you people in the Northeast have little experience of uh, the caste system, which pervades all, is, all aspects of life uh, in the mainland India. And you know, the caste system is uh, based on division of labor. But division of labor, there is nothing wrong about division of labor. Every society has uh, some kind of division of labor. But what is bad about the caste system is that this division of labor is based on birth. It is uh, also undemocratic and hierarchical. 
in the sense that uh, it is you are supposed to continue to do a particular kind of work assigned to you by a, by the caste system and you are not allowed to do anything other than that and when you are performing a duty now here every caste is uh, considered as something inferior to some and superior to some others it is hierarchically organized it is hierarchically organized and uh, uh, as a result you can see everybody is considered as superior to some caste and inferior to some other caste huh? so this is another aspect uh, which we need to keep in mind um, and it is undemocratic in the sense that uh, there is no freedom there is no choice huh? no choice so nobody can rise up uh, from their status and entire and enter into another caste say the class system a rich man can become poor and poor man can become rich but such a thing cannot happen in the caste system and the worst thing is that uh, uh, all castes uh, all castes uh, they have to uh, be among their own caste members marry within their caste and any kind of uh, transgressions uh, are considered as uh, uh, you can say uh, something Ill illegal and it can be punished so in this kind of caste system at the lowest state state you have the dalits so these dalits are considered as untouchable caste they were considered as people who had to do menial jobs like cleaning lavatories uh, cleaning the, uh, the dead carcass uh, and sweeping and such kind of things they are considered as uh, unholy unclean they were not allowed to live in the villages they had to live in the outskirts huh hmm? they had no access to education nah they were not allowed to or uh, wear uh, uh, or live in a dignified manner and this was the position of course this was there in the ancient india and also in medieval india it was only during the british period that uh, some changes started taking place because of the introduction of uh, uh, liberal education and because of making it accessible to other castes and it also gave opportunity for some of the lower castes uh, to take up jobs other than what was assigned to them by the caste system huh? and uh, uh, one of the fortunate member was uh, uh, ambedkar's father who got job as subedar in the british army huh? so he took up some job which is uh, different from the job assigned to him by the caste system so having uh, worked in the army he understood the uh, the importance of education and he educated uh, his children as well and uh, ambedkar was one who took advantage of this education he was sent to schools huh? but though he was sent to school you know the way that hum that humiliation that he had to experience in the schools uh, was uh, uh, enormous you know when he went to the schools he was not allowed to sit on bench he was expected to bring a gunny bag every day and sit on the gunny bag he was not uh, 
permitted to open the tap and drink water hmm? because it was, uh, it was considered that by touching water it becomes impure he was not allowed to sit in uh, uh, the cart carrying this other school children because uh, it was not to the liking of uh, the children of the upper caste and it, uh, the humiliation was such that even the barber did not want to cut his hair and he had to cut his hair himself so he faced such kinds of humiliation uh, during uh, his own school days but that did not deter him from pursuing his studies in spite of all these problems uh, he uh, pursued his studies and completed his school education he was the first in his own caste or in his locality satara uh, from his caste who has completed uh, his 10th class and that was considered as something great at that point of time but he did not stop with that he went to uh, bombay and studied at puc in elphinstone college and afterwards he did his uh, degree uh, in uh, uh, bombay university and you know when uh, he did so well that uh, uh, his performance was so good that it attracted the attention of uh, maharaja of baroda who was a progressive man he understood uh, the um, talent of uh, this boy and he sponsored scholarship which enabled uh, ambedkar to go to us and study in columbia university you know he did his ma and phd in economics in columbia university the agreement was such that he was to complete his studies and come back and serve the baroda kingdom baroda king so he came back Uh, and so for some time and again went and this time to uh, london uh, so again sponsored by mm, uh, uh, with a scholarship he went to london school of economics and also studied in uh, uh, london university he did again a phd and also earned degree in law hmm so you know don't uh, the kind of degrees that he got he got uh, four phds uh, delit uh, and uh, law degree and many other honorary degrees during his lifetime just imagine a person from a, a dalit community eh, with limited uh, resources uh, acquiring uh, such a status he became uh, for him it is not just earning degrees along with that he was simultaneously gaining knowledge in different branches of uh, uh, sciences social sciences uh, he uh, he was well versed in uh, uh, history economics law religion uh, in many fields he had uh, such a good library uh, so that was uh, the kind of uh, arch that he had uh, to gain knowledge you know all this was done at a time when there was no reservation policy you understand this huh? it is only through his hard work and dedication he proved to the upper caste uh, uh, people who believe <laughs> that knowledge is the monopoly of uh, only few uh, people brahmans or other upper caste he showed that uh, anybody can study and can excel hmm? so that is what uh, the great contributions which is something which should inspire the uh, people even uh, the tribal communities uh, in northeast uh, the women and also 
uh, the Dalits. Uh, so this is uh, so it is a kind of inspiration for uh, all of us uh, coming from uh, the uh, you can say the underprivileged uh, sections of the society. See, having done so much, uh, if you have pursued the uh, knowledge and gained so many degrees, uh, the general temptation is that uh, you take up a good job maybe in the university or in a bureaucracy or mm, become a um, lawyer eh? and have a, a very good life. But that is not what uh, Ambedkar did. Ambedkar came back to uh, India and started working for uh, the community. He did not forget his community, his own people. He did not forget all that humiliation that uh, he experienced as a child. So he wanted to bring about a change in the lives of uh, the Dalits. Hmm? In the lives of the Dalits. Uh, so uh, uh, when he came back, uh, he took upon himself uh, the responsibility of uh, educating, organizing, uh, and empowering uh, the Dalits. Hmm? So he started uh, uh, a magazine called Mook Nayak. Mook means, uh, you can say, the, um, those who are voiceless. Right? So the leader of the voiceless, that is the, uh, that's how one can translate. Uh, where through that he began to uh, popularize his ideas uh, and communicate uh, with the uh, uh, this uh, Dalit people. Yeah? Then he uh, took up many kinds of uh, agitations uh, during his own lifetime to bring to light uh, uh, the uh, problems of uh, people. Yes, at that point of time also, there were some, um, you can say, reformist movements uh, which addressed the issues of caste. So there were people who were advocating uh, inter-caste dining or inter-caste marriages uh, as solution to overcome uh, the caste, uh, uh, you can, uh, rigidities. Ambedkar was not against them, but he believed that uh, they are inadequate. They are inadequate. According to him, the root of uh, untouchability lies in uh, uh, the Hindu religious beliefs. Hindu religious beliefs uh, which were uh, propagated by the Vedas and the Manismruti, which actually justified the caste rigidity and caste oppression. So he believed that unless you fight against uh, the uh, scriptures which advocated uh, this uh, caste system, you cannot uh, uh, root, uh, root out untouchability. He also believed that uh, you don't, you can't be, uh, trust on the, the generosity of the upper caste people. Rather, we have to educate uh, and develop uh, uh, the uh, do something to empower the people themselves. I mean, the Dalits themselves, so that they themselves fight their battle, uh, their battles. So that is how he started. Uh, organizing uh, different kinds of movements. So he actually, uh, you know, that was also the time when the Dalits were not allowed to enter temples. Temples uh, thing. Uh, so he led a temple entry movement. He led the Dalits and they said, uh, well, and uh, he, said, uh, he went to the, the temple and said, the Dalits have right to enter the temple. So he had to confront uh, the upper caste members uh, who were against them. And he also led a very famous uh, march called Mahad March, 
where thousands of the Dalits uh, were mobilized to a public tank in uh, Kolaba in Bo Bombay, uh, uh, where they say, where the Dalits asserted their right to drink water from the public tank. You know, there were restrictions uh, on uh, the Dalits uh, drinking water even from the public tanks. Uh, so he had to say that we are human beings, uh, so we have as much right as others uh, to have uh, uh, access to the public uh, utilities. Uh, so that's the another thing, uh, uh, important thing which uh, he let uh, the moment he let. And he also started uh, uh, the organizations like uh, Indian Labor Party uh, and also Scheduled Caste uh, Federation uh, in order to uh, enrich uh, and organize uh, the Dalits. Uh, so he became the voice of the Dalits uh, during that period and he represented uh, the problems of the depressed communities uh, to the Simon Commission. And he argued for uh, certain concessions uh, uh, for uh, the, uh, uh, the Dalits and the other oppressed communities uh, uh, in different roundtable conferences. I'll talk more about it uh, uh, later. So it is like this that uh, you can see that uh, the, there was a continuous effort uh, uh, on his part uh, during his lifetime to work for uh, the upliftment of a uh, Dalit community. So it is natural that the Dalits uh, today consider uh, him as a messiah. But what we generally forget is he's much more than a Dalit leader. And that is where he becomes important, uh, important to all of us. He's not just a Dalit leader. Uh, he's uh, uh, a national leader in a sense. He was a nationalist, but a, a different kind of nationalist. Uh, so uh, you know that as a, uh, per, uh, this one, uh, yeah, uh, she did not take active part in uh, Congress uh, party. Mm -hmm. You can see that uh, uh, when he returned back to uh, uh, India from England, he was enthused by this uh, nationalist movement. But as I told you, he saw that the nationalist movement or the nationalist leaders were focusing only on fighting against the British. They were not interested in uh, uh, bringing about a change in uh, the society, in the caste system. Uh, Ambedkar wanted that alongside uh, the fight for freedom, the people should also fight uh, against a caste system, which oppresses the majority of uh, the people in the country. But the national, nationalist leaders, most of whom were from upper caste, they were not in favor of uh, uh, bringing in the caste mm -hmm. issue uh, in uh, the discussion uh, of uh, uh, the nationalist movement. And that was the one which uh, made uh, uh, Ambedkar feel dejected by the uh, nationalist movement. And he kept aloof from uh, the movement led by the Congress. Uh, and he uh, began to focus more and more on empowering the Dalit community by fighting against uh, the caste system. And interestingly, well, Gandhi recognized his capability and his intellectual uh, abilities. And Gandhi entered into a dialogue uh, with uh, Ambedkar. Uh, 
Uh, and there was a very interesting uh, uh, interaction between uh, Gandhi and uh, uh, Ambedkar on caste system. Gandhi was of the view that untouchability is a sin. He was very clear about it. He said untouchability is sin. Nobody should be humiliated. Uh, and uh, the uh, uh, Dalits or the Harijans, he called them, should be treated as uh, uh, human beings. Uh, he kept uh, those Harijans in his own uh, ashram uh, uh, and he started doing the work of a Harijan by cleaning the lavatories and others. That is his way of conveying to the uh, people that uh, Harijans also should be respected. But the problem with Gandhi was that he believed that uh, untouchability is a sin, but caste system is rational. He did not find anything wrong with the caste system. He believed that uh, the caste system is a rational division of uh, labor. And in all kinds of society, we have uh, 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 four kinds of varnas. Uh, and he thought, the caste system should be there, but the, there should not be uh, untouchability. But it is where Ambedkar differed. Ambedkar argued that untouchability is the byproduct of the caste system. Huh? Byproduct of the caste system. And as long as there is caste system, there is going to be. Huh? untouchability. So you cannot say I would fight against untouchability, but I keep the caste system in touch. He believed that there is a need to fight, root out the caste system, which alone liberates the untouchables. Huh? So that was uh, this, this ideological differences were there between Gandhi and Ambedkar. Huh? And this ideological differences uh, went to a, a high pitch in the 1930s uh, when uh, Ambedkar advocated separate electorate for the Dalits or the scheduled caste. So in the, uh, second, the round table conferences, uh, he was pleading that like the Muslims, uh, the uh, Dalits uh, or the scheduled caste should also have a uh, separate electorates uh, so that their own members elect their own representatives. Mm? So that was the kind of thing, but that was something which Gandhi opposed. Gandhi opposed. Gandhi believed that uh, the separate electorates will divide uh, the Hindu people, uh, and it was uh, uh, it actually. Uh, the, come in the way of uh, anti-imperialist movement. Uh, he went on a hunger strike uh, uh, in Pune jail uh, against uh, the uh, de uh, against uh, Ambedkar's decision, and that actually brought so much of pressure on Ambedkar that Ambedkar was later forced uh, to take back his demand uh, for uh, the separate electorate for the Dalits. And he, uh, they entered into what is called Pune fact. And that Pune fact became the foundation for what we today consider as a, a reservation policy. Uh, the reservation policy became, uh, which we uh, uh, experience uh, today, uh, this is the byproduct of uh, that Pune pact. Somehow the experience of this uh, confrontation was such that uh, uh, Ambedkar lost faith in uh, Gandhi and he considered, uh, he, he said, uh, I never call Gandhi as Mahatma Gandhi. And that is what he stuck to in his whole life. He only uh, called him by name and never as Mahatma Gandhi. So this is a very interesting phase uh, in that. And then uh, there is another thing. Why is it uh, uh, that uh, he did not even go with the communists? Uh, 
you know, by that time, there was a, a Communist Party of India working and operating in India. And uh, you can see that uh, Ambedkar had a regard for uh, Marx. He wrote a book, Marx and Buddha. Uh, so he uh, was in favor of some kind of uh, state uh, socialism. Uh, but uh, he uh, differed from Marxism on two grounds. One is that he believed that unlike the Marxists, he believed that the state can be used for the betterment of the people. State and the law can be used for the betterment of the people. There is no need to destroy that. And he was also against uh, violence. Uh, he was against violence. And another thing, when it comes to India, what he felt is that alongside class, there is also caste. So unless people take into consideration the caste element and caste oppression and caste inequalities, uh, there is no way that you can bring about uh, revolution or change. Hmm? So these were the things where he differed with uh, the communists also, uh, and he did not join them. Rather, he started his own independent labor movement uh, and didn't join uh, the, uh, the struggles led by the Communist Party of India at that point of time, because he considered even these leaders of the Communist Party are actually from the upper caste and they don't have the intention of uh, fighting uh, uh, against uh, caste discrimination. And this kind of his, his opinions, I'm uh, frankly stating to you the, his uh, own political stand. I don't uh, uh, take a stand here saying whether it is right or wrong. Uh, it depends on from which angle you look at it. Uh, but that was the stand that he, uh, he took at that point of time. Uh, and maybe he thought that that is the uh, right way to empower the people. Uh, but uh, that is something which uh, the present generation can always evaluate and see whether uh, the approach of uh, Ambedkar was right or wrong. Mm? But uh, uh, you, one should understand that there was sincerity in what he believed in and what he executed. Then you come to uh, think. So this is the one point political stand, uh, which uh, uh, thing. Then, but that doesn't mean that he was uh, uh, not uh, in favor of independence. He was in favor of independence. Uh, he advocated uh, the need for uh, India emerging as an independent country. So when, you know, uh, when uh, after 1940s, when uh, the British became weak and they were forced to leave the country and, uh, and before that, uh, they uh, um, uh, decided to have a, a constitutional assembly. Eh? You know, in, in this constitutional assembly, uh, the people were elected from uh, different uh, provinces. You know, Ambedkar uh, could not get elected from Bombay province. Rather, he was elected from uh, uh, Bengal province. Uh, and he entered the Constitutional Assembly. But a very interesting thing, in spite of a very uh, problematic relations with uh, Gandhi, eh? Gandhi actually advised uh, Nehru to make uh, 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 Ambedkar as uh, the chairperson of the drafting committee. Eh? So you, many of us uh, uh, here tend to say as if uh, Ambedkar uh, drafted the, the entire constitution. It is not exactly so. There was a constitutional assembly which had uh, uh, many members, bright minds of that time. Of course, the socialists and the communists were not allowed, but there were others uh, representing different walks of life uh, who were representing uh, the Constitutional Assembly. Uh, there were leaders and intellectuals of the time, and uh, 
yeah, within the uh, constitutional assembly made uh, different kinds of uh, committees and subcommittees mm -hmm. different uh, committees and subcommittees uh, which uh, to look into different aspects of uh, the uh, future india and these committees and subcommittees gave their recommendations their recommendations uh, and it is here uh, that ambedkar became important as a chairperson of uh, uh, the uh, dropping committee he was the one who co collated uh, all the information and the recommendation from uh, different uh, different uh, uh, committees and subcommittees organized them uh, in a logical manner presented them uh, uh, in an effective way uh, uh, to the to the constitution assembly eh? and she was the one who intervened actively in defense of uh, different provisions uh, uh, of the constitution mm -hmm. uh, argued convinced uh, showed the way uh, showed the way to uh, the members uh, and brought a uh, some kind of consensus uh, consensus among uh, the uh, different uh, sections of the people i mean the members of the constitutional assembly it is in that sense he played a very important role his own background in law his own uh, scholarship uh, all came handy uh, in a way, uh, and he ensured that all his ideas, uh, his liberal uh, secular ideas, uh, his uh, concerns for the uh, uh, depressed communities, the women, they all find a, a place in that constitution, uh, which he dropped it. Uh, so it is in that sense, uh, he was indeed uh, an architect of India, he played a very important role in making of the constitution of India for which uh, all of us uh, should be obliged to him. Huh? So this is another point which I would like to say. And the, the other one which, uh, for which we should all uh, respect him is uh, the role that uh, he played uh, in case of uh, uh, the woman empowerment. And you know, he was, he did not fight only for the uh, Dalits. He also uh, understood the problems of the tribal people. Huh? Uh, you know, uh, he was the one who understood the specificity of the tribal people and their, uh, and hence he advocated autonomy for them. Huh? You know, he defended uh, the uh, uh, the, even in case of the Northeast, uh, he uh, understood that the tribal people of the Northeast are different from uh, the tribals of the rest of India. Hence, he advocated uh, uh, and supported uh, the sixth schedule, uh, introduction of the sixth schedule and the introduction of uh, autonomous district councils uh, and regional councils. At the same time, he said that the communities, uh, you cannot forcibly bring uh, the tribal communities into the national mainstream. And he advocated uh, that, that the Hindu courts are not or should not be applicable to the tribals of uh, the mainland India. Uh, so all these things, he was very clear about uh, uh, the tribal issues also. So also the issues concerning the women. Uh, he understood that the caste system is uh, oppressing not only the Dalits, but also the women. Uh, so the uh, orthodox here, uh, Hinduism was coming in the way of uh, women asserting uh, their own individuality. That's why he actually fought. He was the first for, uh, among the first to raise the issue of uh, women's right to property women's right to inheritance, uh, divorce. Uh, and he was the one who advocated uh, intercaste marriages. And hence, uh, he said, uh, he introduced, he wanted to introduce civil marriages. He came out against polygamy, 
and advocated strict monogamy. And all these ideas, he wanted to bring uh, it out in the form of the Hindu court bill. But that Hindu court bill was so radical that the people of that time, the orthodox, Hindu orthodox leaders of that time, both outside Congress and inside Congress, opposed his uh, bill. As a result, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, despite having support, uh, uh, ideologically agreeing with uh, Ambedkar, he could not dare to introduce uh, Hindu court bill in 1949-50. And uh, 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 was, Ambedkar was so frustrated that uh, he, uh, he was forced to leave uh, uh, the, uh, as a law minister and he left uh, Congress. And the rest of his time, he started working. He believed that nothing can be done to democratize the Hindu society. So what is good for the Dalits is to leave the Hindu fold and embrace Buddhism. So that was the kind of thing which he started doing. And he started working on building organizations for uh, the, you can say, the uh, uh, organizations of uh, uh, the uh, Dalits. He started a Republican party, a new party as a counter to Congress. So this was the kind of efforts he was doing during his uh, time before his death. Then I come to now to the last part of uh, uh, the story where you need to understand uh, the uh, significance. What is the importance of uh, Ambedkar today? Uh, yes, uh, uh, Ambedkar uh, continues to be relevant for the Dalits, uh, even today, because we see uh, uh, caste discrimination and caste oppression in some pockets of India, even today. Yeah? So uh, ideas of Ambedkar continues to influence uh, the, uh, the Dalits for long time to come. But as I told you, Ambedkar is not just a, a Dalit leader, he is a national leader many of his ideas uh, continue to have uh, great uh, significance for uh, India today. You know, the kind of India that we have today is little shocking. Uh, the way the things are moving in India, uh, you know, the democratic foundations or its secular foundations are under threat. Uh, communalism is on the rise uh, and there is uh, uh, kind of a, a hero worship, uh, which is uh, uh, giving shape to some kind of uh, autocracy. And we, uh, uh, people start giving up this idea of uh, socialistic pattern of society. Yeah? And then we started looking at uh, the thing as if economic growth is everything. And uh, industrialization and development is pursued at the cost of uh, the uh, social sector development. Mm -hmm. So you can see uh, that the inequalities are increasing. The government uh, is abdicating its responsibility towards the poor and it is identifying more and more with the rich. It is in this context that uh, there is uh, the necessity of uh, looking at uh, Ambedkar again. Huh? You know, Ambedkar was, uh, uh, no, did not fight only uh, for Dalits. He also had a vision for India. He may not be a socialist, but he believed uh, in a, uh, uh, you can say, intervention state a kind of state socialism. He advocated that agriculture should be given equal importance along with the industry. And he wanted uh, that uh, social sector has to be taken care of, education, 
health, hygiene, all these things are important to him. And all are now in shambles. And it is here that we need to look at uh, once again eh, by the ideas of Ambedkar. And Ambedkar becomes important also because of uh, the kind of uh, mm, hero worship uh, which is taking place in uh, different political parties, uh, which is giving birth to a kind of uh, autocracy. So, and it is here that uh, uh, Ambedkar cautioned us. Uh, he cautioned us that uh, it is wrong, uh, uh, that uh, it is all right to be devotional in religion. But if we become bucks uh, in politics, then that would give birth to a, what you can say, a, uh, undemocratic uh, authoritarian uh, regime. And he also told us that uh, uh, the constitution is built on the principles of uh, political democracy. But unless there is a social democracy, eh, this political democracy doesn't work. You have to listen to his speech, his last speech in the Constitutional Assembly, which I will read it out, uh, where he emphasized uh, on the importance of uh, uh, what he says, uh, uh, the importance of uh, taking care of uh, uh, what you say, uh, the uh, socio-cultural aspects. He believed that we have a political democracy, but there is no economic and social democracy. Unless we are able to establish uh, social and economic democracy, this political democracy doesn't work for long. Uh, if I have to uh, speak in his own language, he, this is what he said, uh, he cautioned. And this question is something which all of us should remember at this point of time when we are observing uh, his birth centenary. And this is what uh, he said. On the 26th of January, 1950, we are going to enter into a life of contradictions. In politics, we will have equality and in social and economic life, we will have inequality. In politics, we'll be recognizing the principle of uh, one vote and one, uh, one man, one vote, or one vote, one value. In our political, social, and economic life, we shall, by reason of our own social and economic structure, continue to deny the principle of one man, one value. How long shall we continue to live this life of contradictions? How long shall we continue to deny equally in our, uh, equality in our social and economic life? If we continue to deny it for long, we will do only by putting our political democracy in peril. We must remove this contradiction of uh, the earliest, as early as possible, or else those who suffer from inequality will blow up the structure of uh, political democracy, which this assembly has laboriously built up. This is what uh, uh, Ambedkar told us. Uh, we have political democracy. This is what uh, the constitution advocates. But in society, we do not, we have uh, social and economic inequalities. And these two things cannot uh, uh, go together for long. Unless you address the problems of uh, social and economic inequalities, those who suffered because of these inequalities uh, will fight against this constitution and blow it up. Eh? 
So that is the thing which, uh, uh, thing which he warned us. And he was the one who did not think that constitution is something which cannot be changed. Yes, constitution depending on uh, the uh, needs of the people, it can be uh, thought of, you can change. But the thing should be changed for the better. But now we are experiencing a situation where things are going worse. Huh? Our thing, thing. So the, even the limited freedoms that, that the constitution gives that are being taken away. And it is uh, for that reason that uh, we need to re remember uh, Ambedkar uh, more than anyone else at this point of time to restore our, uh, you can say, faith in the constitution uh, and to ensure that uh, the constitution works for the betterment of uh, all sections of the people, especially the oppressed communities, uh, the Dalits, uh, the tribals, and the women and the minorities. And with this, I stop my lecture. And if the organizers have uh, any kind of uh, doubts or questions, uh, you're ready, ready to ask. To the best of my ability, I will try to answer to your queries. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. It was wonderful to hear from you once again. So can you hear me? Can you hear me, yeah, sir? Yeah, I'm able to hear you. Okay. While, uh, while we're waiting for the uh, Q&A from the students, I would like to ask raise certain questions. Ambedkar faced discrimination in his time. And even after, right after independence, there were discrimination. And discrimination and intolerance is still there even today. So discrimination is discrimination and intol intolerance. Is it par part of Indian culture? What is your answer to that, sir? See, these are all kinds of uh, things. They are a part of uh, the kind of uh, social system that we inherited. Okay. Yeah? The social system that we inherited. Uh, but that mm -hmm. social system is not something static. It can be changed. Mm -hmm. It can okay. be changed. Huh? So uh, it is not that uh, something is like that today, hence it will continue to be there forever. Huh? And that is what uh, the uh, leaders uh, like, Ma, uh, like Ambedkar tried to do. And they did mm -hmm. su succeed to some extent. Huh? It is not that uh, uh, the uh, uh, Dalits were discriminated and oppressed in the same way as it was uh, during uh, uh, the pre-colonial times uh, or during the colonial times. Huh? Mm -hmm. well, there were some changes definitely for the better in course of uh, these uh, uh, few decades of independence. Uh, and the okay. Dalits have become uh, uh, more conscious of their identity, they become more conscious of their rights, and they are getting educated, they are questioning and challenging. Eh? It is okay. true that uh, uh, still in the villages, uh, uh, in the interior places, uh, uh, you know, the caste system is uh, mm, uh, very much prevalent, uh, and one need to fight. And uh, the Dalits are fighting. The very fact that they are fighting is an important uh, uh, thing uh, mm -hmm. which uh, we should appreciate. And that is something which was not happening earlier. Earlier people, when Dalits uh, were discriminated and oppressed, uh, the Dalits themselves thought uh, it is their fate, nothing can be done about it. But mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. they are organizing themselves. They are fighting a battle uh, for bringing about a change, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. Which okay. is a good thing. Okay. Huh? Okay. So it is not that uh, things have not changed. They are changing, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we have to look for uh, more changes. Okay. Hmm? Okay. Sure. That is sure. What Thank I you mean. so much, sir. Sir, the questions are yeah. pouring in, and for the benefit of everyone, I am going to read out the question. The the question is from Jonas. Yeah, you can Bonfrey. ask uh, some of the things so, which sir, I know I can. Yeah. Tell. So the question is. 
why did Dr. B. R. Ambedkar didn't get much attention like Mahatma Gandhi or Jawaharlal Nehru for his contribution? A uh, very good question, sir. Why Shall did repeat, he get? Sir? Why didn't Why didn't uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar didn't get much attention like Mahatma Gandhi or Jawaharlal Nehru for his contribution? Yeah, I repeat, that's sir? a thing. Uh, okay. You can give uh, many kinds of reasons. Uh, uh, one reason is uh, uh, perhaps Gandhi and Nehru participated uh, in uh, the nationalist movement actively, uh, and they are something known to, uh, but they became known to people across uh, uh, the country because of uh, their mm. uh, active participation in uh, the nationalist movement. Uh, that was not something which uh, uh, Ambedkar did. Uh, uh, Ambedkar mm -hmm. concentrated uh, his focus on uh, the issues of the depressed communities. Uh, uh, but I think uh, mm -hmm. so he was uh, not as much known to them as uh, uh, Gandhi and Nehru. And other things is, are also there. There may okay. be even a caste bias. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because the kind of issues that the um, uh, that uh, the uh, Ambedkar raised was not palatable to uh, the, uh, you can say, the elites of that time. Uh, the elites of that time. And it is in that sense, uh, Gandhi and Nehru also didn't want uh, caste issues to dominate uh, the, uh, the uh, freedom struggle, uh, the mm -hmm. ideology. So, so they uh, uh, think they also had perhaps the uh, intention to keep him under check and uh, not to bring him uh, to the national forum. Uh, so that's there was uh, some kind of politics also there to deny him his place, uh, deny him his place uh, in the history. Uh, so that was the thing. So though he was made a minister, uh, the people were opposing uh, within his, in, his, in his own ministry. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, but the people were opposing him. Babu Rajendra Prasad uh, was dead against him uh, as much as uh, the Hindu uh, 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 Hindu Mahasabha. Mm -hmm. uh, so there were uh, uh, the uh, situation was such that uh, uh, the voice of uh, Ambedkar uh, was uh, not heard. Mm -hmm. okay. Was not okay. heard because he did not have that kind of clout. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm that kind of clout or support uh, which uh, Nehru and Gandhi had. Okay, okay. So, uh, sir, yeah. uh, an, an, another question is, you quote Dr. Ambedkar where he states, Pakti in religion may be a salvation to the soul, but Pakti in politics or, uh, or hero worship in politics is surely a road to dictate a degradation and eventual dictatorship. So we, we see this in every, most of metro political bodies and we need not mention. So what is the possible solution? What can the citizen of India do to evade, to evade this? See, yeah. uh, this uh, part he told in the context of uh, uh, making uh, Gandhi as Mahatma Gandhi, you know? So there was a hero kind of worship at that point of time where people blindly believed Gandhi eh? mm -hmm, without mm -hmm. understanding him at all. Eh? Mm -hmm. So he was uh, the one who was opposing uh, at that point of time this blind belief or blind faith in Gandhi. Mm -hmm. eh? I am not here to say that Gandhi is good or bad. But okay, blindly yeah, worshipping yeah. Gandhi and following Gandhi, he saw that as mm -hmm. a danger. Because he said, yeah, sure, what sure. Uh, the politics of Gandhi and ideology of Gandhi, there is a contradiction. Mm -hmm. The ideology of Gandhi is so, uh, he believed that it is so regressive that it doesn't mm -hmm. help in emancipation of the people. Okay, huh? okay. That's why he was dead against uh, that kind of hero worship. Mm -hmm. huh? okay, okay. But that is something which is happening uh, in the world, yeah. in the, uh, the country also again. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So exactly, where, so. where most of us get carried away by the leader, huh? 
without mm-hmm. uh, critically looking at his policies and the impact yeah sure huh? sir so mm-hmm. many leaders you say well, those leaders jindabad jindabad you don't know why you say jindabad mm-hmm. huh? so that's the kind of thing that blindness is something which is dangerous uh, uh, mm-hmm. uh, to the system Huh? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. we believe that oh our leader knows everything and that is how hitler was created exactly so exactly people died for him uh-huh. and that hitler <laughs> created a whole world and that mm-hmm, is something mm-hmm. which we okay. conscious of we should not blindly mm-hmm. support or oppose anybody and that mm-hmm. is true even exactly, in case sir. of ambedkar ambedkar mm. would be the first man Uh, to oppose if he is made into a kind of god and mm-hmm, worship mm-hmm. okay 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 huh? sure sure uh-huh, so uh-huh. you have to understand his ideas uh, and mm-hmm. you have to see what is correct what is wrong uh, and take all that which is good in him uh, instead mm-hmm, of blindly okay. uh, uh, worshiping him or blindly believing that everything that he said and did was right okay, and so also okay. our leaders Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Huh? So, okay. uh, unless we ourselves are conscious, this is mm-hmm, another thing mm-hmm. which he told. Okay. Huh? Mm-hmm. That uh, uh, sometimes there can be a very good constitution, mm-hmm. but if the people manning the constitution are bad, mm-hmm. constitution not bring any kind of change. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Huh? We are the people. Mm. Uh, who have to do this work constitution automatically will not bring a change mm. okay so if we are if only we are politically conscious if we, only we are rational okay, huh? okay then okay, it sir. is possible for us to bring about a change otherwise the constitution will be telling one thing and uh, the state will be doing some other thing okay, okay. sir so, So if you, hello sir yeah so if you have more time the, the the discussion is becoming more interesting with all the questions for in and uh, there here is another question sir why were the parties established by dr bharti established by dr ambedkar not particularly successful now now you understand uh, the politics of the parties of course mm-hmm. uh, uh, he established the republican Mm-hmm. Hello, hello, sir. What happened? After how many? After after a new month. Hello. Oh, sorry, sorry. There's some no, call. I'm just uh, coming back. Okay, okay, sure, sir, sure, sir. Sure, sure. Uh, hello. Hello, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, It's okay, sir. See, It's okay. political party uh, that he started, the uh, Republican Party, after his death, mm. that Republican Party uh, uh, didn't have a proper leaders. Mm-hmm. So those mm-hmm. leaders okay. themselves uh, became. Uh, uh, they started aligning with the the uh, Congress. Okay, okay, uh? sir. Mm-hmm. He started mm-hmm. the party to fight against the Congress, but that same <laughs> Republican joined Congress for certain papers. Okay, uh? okay, so okay, that okay. That is the thing uh, uh, which happened. Uh, I think even now there is a Republican Party, but that Republican Party is. Uh, Uh, instead of fighting against the system it has become a part of the system so there is always a, 
a possibility of corruption of party even if it is a party is the uh, is the party of the dalits mm -hmm. if it is not following a uh, 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 by the uh, path of uh, you know radical path the, it is very much possible that uh, it degenerates uh? mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. happened even with the sp uh? mm -hmm. bahujan samaj party came as a party with so much of hopes uh, but in course of time it became corrupt uh, and it started degenerating yeah so that kind mm -hmm. of uh, possibility is very much there and another important thing is uh, financial support Mm -hmm. Unless you have exactly. a money, you cannot sell. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Exactly, sir. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Please do not get that kind of corporate funding. Okay. So these mm -hmm. are the practical things. Okay, 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 sir. Hello. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for the program uh, and the interaction. But before I hand over the uh the place to ma'am just one last question and then after this we'll uh, give the uh, this to ma'am the sort of thing is you talk about dr ambedkar where he doesn't enjoy any reservation he on his own merits he achieved that standard and then he came back and talk about reservation again yeah to some extent and so what is your view whether we uh, should we have reservation based on cars or based on uh, SC or ST or based on economics, or will there be reservation at all? One last question, sir. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> no, no, this is interesting because most of the students listening are from uh, One uh, thing which the um, uh, life of uh, uh, Ambedkar shows is mm. that uh, scholarship or intelligence is not a monopoly of uh, any particular caste uh, or group of people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anybody can become a scholar on mm -hmm. intelligent, provided mm -hmm. they are given opportunities. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah? Sure. Provided they are given opportunities. Mm -hmm. For generations together, these uh, Dalits were deprived of uh, these opportunities to get educated. Mm -hmm. yeah? Okay. Well, or opportunities to do something other than what uh, the uh, caste system forced them to do. Okay. Hmm? Okay, okay. Ambedkar was fortunate enough to get uh, some kind of support uh, from the enlightened persons of that time. Mm -hmm. uh, and he could go and uh, uh, he could go abroad and uh, uh, complete his degrees. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. that kind of opportunities, uh, everybody will not get it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, there is potentiality uh, to become Ambedkars in all communities. Mm -hmm. But if you are poor, if you are mm. uh, from among those uh, depressed communities, uh, you will not ab be able to pursue that. Hence, mm -hmm, the state mm -hmm, should mm -hmm. come forward to provide them that, mm -hmm. that kind of opportunities mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that they also get educated, they also become competent, eh? mm -hmm. and they also uh, 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 get empowered in course of time. So okay, in that sense, okay. it was logical at the time of independence to give reservations uh, for uh, uh, the Dalits and the tribal people. Huh? Okay. It is uh, uh, okay, uh, sure. at that point of time it was necessary also. Hmm? Mm -hmm. okay. The okay. only okay. Uh, okay. Uh, thing is uh, that is it a solution to all problems? No. Mm -hmm. The problem with this reservation is that we started or started thinking that without reservations we cannot become anything. Uh, mm -hmm. We cannot develop at all. Which is again an mm -hmm. illusion, which mm. Ambedkar himself showed that without reservation, also you can do become what you want to become. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But sometimes the reservations give such kind of impression to the people that without reservation we cannot survive. Mm -hmm. And without reservation, reservation is the solution for all problems. <laughs> no, it is not solution for all problems. Mm -hmm. So there is certain thing which you have to understand uh, that uh, our in course of time, yes, as a stepping stone 
there is nothing wrong in making mm-hmm. use of reservations but mm-hmm. after a point of time we have to uh, live up to mm-hmm. our own uh, this one uh, strength okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Our team, mm-hmm. there will be, uh, it is only say we respect ambedkar why eh? because she didn't have any kind of support but still he could become what he what a great mm-hmm. man and that is something mm-hmm. which all of you can do that Huh? Yes, sir. So there exactly, is nothing sir. wrong exactly. in utilizing uh, reservations, but it is wrong to believe that reservation is the solutions to all problems. Mm-hmm. We should go yeah, exactly, beyond. Sir. Exactly, sir. Go exactly. Beyond. exactly, sir. Exactly, yeah. sir. Thank you. Okay, sure, sir. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. It was so nice having you uh, as a resource person, and we will t- love to have you in the coming future. And uh, that will be. live interaction sir now thank you so much sir. i ha- hand over this part of the program to our principal dr sam Hello, sir. He's going up. Okay, चलो. Yeah, ma'am. Hello. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm nice so to see you. So happy to meet you, sir. I have been really after you for the last few days. You know, for for mm-hmm. your valuable time to come and speak to our students mm-hmm. and to our teachers. I'm so happy at last we could make it. I wish it was an uh, an offline. Then you know we could have interacted. Uh, properly probably more with feelings and emotions but nevertheless sir uh, we are really grateful to you that you have come to our college virtually and sir before i start i would like to show you something i have a copy of the original uh, <laughs> constitution of india sir yeah 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 that's nice mm. where the word secular and socialism is missing yeah Okay, sir. This, of course, I thought my students would be coming and they would have a glimpse of the constitution. Uh, once again, sir, welcome to this college, and uh, dear students, respected vice principals, uh, dear members of the non-teaching staff, uh, a very warm welcome. In fact, a very warm afternoon for us. We are all excited today because we had a very interesting session here today from Dr. Shrikant, who spoke to us about Dr. Ambedkar. In fact, uh, we as we in Sri Lanka Commerce College, we felt that we should celebrate this great man's birthday, his life, because he means a lot to us. Without him, we wouldn't be where we are, especially people of Northeast and um, as women. or as a woman even i feel how much he has contributed to my upbringing probably because if he did not fight for the women's right for women's education then i wouldn't be where i am today okay sir then uh sir you have brought out some very important points in your talk you said he became famous after his death like uh, karl marx and 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 his own colleagues rejected him Yes, it it happens, sir, like this, because we have seen if we read history and if we read political science or or even literature, you know there are people who are ahead of our time probably, and they're not accepted. They are not accepted in the society because people have their own ulterior motives, and they don't want these people to come up in life. But nevertheless, Dr. Ambedkar, in spite of all the rejections in life, he came up. You know, and uh, today I'm speaking. you already know about dr ambedkar you know so much about him but today i'm i'm speaking to my students so that dr ambedkar's life will be a model for our students so that they will learn to come up in life in spite of rejection in spite of struggles and difficulties because if you don't face difficulties we don't uh, we don't become uh, steady enough to face life then uh, yes uh there are some people in indian politics we have seen some people have been treated uh um, you have already mentioned nehru and gandhi they are almost demigods i have seen in in some parts of um 
Western, Western parts of the country, especially in Gujarat, people worship him. I've seen, you know, his photos are, you know, he's deified there. And probably because at that point of time, you know, there were less education, people were less educated, and especially common people, poor people, whatever was told to them, they, you know, they took it as, as gospel truth, and they started worshiping Gandhi in that manner. And Gandhi has had his own policies, Ambedkar had had his own policies. But when we read history, we find that Ambedkar was one gentleman who followed, who had integrity of character. What he thought, he said, and what he said, he did till the end. But again, when we look at Gandhi, there are so many documents which says that he, he speaks of integrity of character, but we wonder if he really had integrity of character. That will take another platform for all of us to sit and discuss about him probably. Because if I'm not mistaken, in a library in, in US, sir, some documents have been found and where a letter has been found, which, which was written to one of the leaders by Mahatma Gandhi regarding the inculcation or the uh, bringing of the Northeastern states, the tribals of the Northeastern states to the mainland of India. He said, bring them in and we will treat them as Adibasis. That is the word he used or as Dalits, just as we have the Dalits. So the tribals will be treated as Dalits. But if you look at what he said to the people of the Northeast, you know, it was almost like a woodwinking people, you know, taking them for granted. Of course, that's another debate that we have to talk about probably. Then again, sir, you said that uh, uh, politicians use, yes, these days politicians are using Dr. Ambedkar's name. And now with elections coming on, and because he is serving as as as, as, a, as a tool probably, or as a lollipop probably to the people of India to cast votes. And again, here education is needed, awareness is needed. People should speak more. I think there should be uh, more education about uh, about Ambedkar, what he did, what he said, and what he followed. Then only pro probably people will know. And if I'm not mistaken, Ambedkar's own autobiography is is being studied as a textbook in Columbia University. But in India, he is not regarded so seriously. You know, it's only when, you know, once in a year, his birthday comes, it's celebrated, people, um, people talk about him. Just yesterday, I, I saw some politicians were celebrating his birthday because today's a holiday and they were speaking, you know, all bombastic words about him. Unfortunately, when he was alive, people did not recognize him. And probably the people who were talking yesterday, their own grandfathers did not treat, them pro treat him properly. Some opposed him outrightly, of course. Some, some opposed him outrightly because they did not believe his um, uh, ideologies. That was good enough because you oppose him outrightly. But there were some people you know, who pretended to support him, but they did not support him. And that's why you see probably he was a failure in, in, in the electoral field. You, you were also right, sir, when he said that colonial life, uh, colonial rule opened an opportunity for marginalized people. Yes, Western with colonial rule, Western education came in and ve with Western education, we have become forward. And that's why people of Northeast, because you see Western education really flourished in the Northeast. We, the people of Northeast, we are much more um, open-minded broad-minded than the rest of the country. I can very proudly say that, sir. We, I, I belong to the general caste. We do not believe so much of caste as, as my counterparts in West Bengal probably, sir, or in, in other parts of the country where you know, caste system is really being followed. Uh, you were also right, sir, when you said that the, the political fight for independence was more on political uh, reasons, more for political reasons rather than social cultural reason and Dr. Ambedkar believed in it that until and unless we are uh, socially and culturally free we we cannot call ourselves advanced and educated so that's why his main reason was that we should be educated enough we should come forward and especially the marginalized people and the women and he also believed that uh, any society where women are not respected, where women are not allowed to be educated, where women are not allowed to come to the forefront, that society, that community can never develop. So I think, you know, we as, you know, Northeast people, or maybe my students of Sri Lanka Commerce College should take a cue from here that women education is a must. Because if one woman is educated, she will educate another 10 in the family. And probably this is this was what Dr. Dr. Ambedkar must have, you know, foreseen.
that if women are educated, then she'll be able to educate many more in the neighborhood, in the family, and in the society. Uh, he took upon himself to uplift his commitment, uh, uh, uplift his committee, uh, uh, community, sir. Um, and just an anecdote, sir, to, to share with you. When he was in Columbia University, uh, he, was a, he was a voracious reader, as you know, he, and he would really go to the library. And it, it seems that he would be the first one to go to the library, wait for the peon to open the library, and he'd be the last one to come out from the library. And it so happened on certain days, he would ask the librarian, please extend the time more so that I can read more. And when the peon asked him, why are you so, so unusual? Why are you not like the young, young boys and girls of those, those, those times where people, people are fun living? Then he said, no, I have come here for knowledge. I've come here to learn and I want, I have very less time here. So within that less time, I want to learn more. I want to read more and make myself knowledgeable so that when I go back to my country, I will transfer all the knowledge, all the knowledge that I have accumulated today and give it to my people so and to my community. He also said, if I enjoy today, if I sit here and enjoy today, how will my community be developed how will they be developed when he said they he meant his society he meant the women folk and the oppressed uh, class of india uh, he was right when he said that you know if we have political equality uh, he was he had rightfully said that after 1950 we will be having political equality but not social and economic equality or democracy this is what we see, sir. Yes, politically, we may we may have developed, we may have become the members of, of all the all the figures, you know, 58, G8, and all those not, you know, India is really doing great in the international market, but or in the in, in the political arena, probably international political arena. But if we look within our own country, I think so. We are we are still not developed. Not I think so. I'm sure we are still not developed because there are parts of the country which is not getting or what they should have got even after almost 75 years of our freedom, sir. Uh, I remember, uh, I, I've just heard um, Professor Shimre talking about, you know, the reservation. Is it a good thing? Dr. Ambedkar was against reservation. He was against reservation. And then finally, some members spoke to him. Then he said, okay, for the first 10 years, let there be reservation for, for the, uh, um, the, 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 the downwards classes. But he had, he had, he had uh, it is within, within quote, he wanted the economically backward people to get reservation. Reservation should be uh, given to, on the basis of economical backward not to everybody, because once one depends on reservation, one cannot really develop. And But now the government, we see that Indian government, what are they doing? Reservation is just like a lollipop. Give them a lollipop, they will keep quiet. But if we get reservation, we will not develop because you know we, we, we will be so contented with whatever we get and we will not develop our knowledge, we'll not develop our intelligence probably, and will not move forward towards a higher class of development. So I don't know. I don't believe in reservation. Uh, it's up to you know some people. Of course, again, this this is a very dangerous um, platform where I am, you know, treating properly. Probably, I'm not not against reservation, but I'll be someone who will not like to take reservation for my own children also, because if I can afford, my children should fight on their own. If they fight, they become strong, and and they develop more. So, but but then if they do not fight, then they are they are where they are. And, and then, you know, like uh, lollipops will be given to them and they'll be uh, keeping quiet. So reservation, Dr. Ambedkar was not really in favor of reservation. And regarding, uh, when, when you also said that, uh, yes, I've noted down many things which you said, sir, you, you are a wonderful narrator, I tell you, sir, you, you have really taken me to the, to the colonial era, and you have brought me back again to the, to the post-colonial era, where, where we are living and seeing things in the country, probably. So what I want to say is this to the young students today, that, you know, his quotations, there were, there were various quotations, some, some, some landmark uh, quotes that he had made. In fact, those were his words, but today they have become quotations and which can be a, uh, which can be a guide to the youth of the country so that they can follow up, they can follow him up and his steps. 
as you said, if Dr. Ambedkar in his very, very uh, oppressed situ situation, if he could come up to that level, I think after I read about him and about his life and all the degrees that he has taken, and, 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 and I read about the life of other, other political uh, heroes of that time, sir, I, I, I don't know, I may be wrong also, sir, I feel he was the most highly qualified person of that time. And yet his knowledge was not utilized by some people because again, you know, ulterior motives were there. So I would just like to, you know, quote certain quotations that, you know, that became uh, very popular and that could be a, a kind of a guide to our students, to our youth people here. So when he says, I measure, in quotes, so these are all in, uh, in quotations, I measure the progress of a community by the degree of the progress that women have achieved. So, so if that's what that's we that's what you said earlier, and that's what Dr. Abedkar meant, and that's what we should we should bring it up to the society that if the woman is developed, the whole family is developed. If she gives good education to her children, these children will go out and they will give better education to people. It could be social education, it could be political, it could be economic economic education, whatever it is, awareness. So you see, women need to be need to be need to come forward and they need to be um, educated then he says i like the religion that teaches liberty equality and fraternity that is something so wonderful that he said sir yes these days we think um, you know scriptures as you as you spoke of the man manuscript uh, manusmriti uh, there's lots of controversy about it who burnt it and who did not burn it again so here the interpreters are to be blamed about it not the person who writes it. When he writes things, he writes with proper intention, but it's, it's the interpreters and the followers who are following it. They are the ones who are dictating to the other followers. So he says, religion, he believes in the religion of the heart. You know, when, when there is religion of the heart, when there is peace in my heart, when I love person in my heart, then I will see equality in the world. I will see that everyone is equal. I will not see between the rich and the poor, between the higher caste and the lower caste, sir. So, and he believed in the fraternity. Again, love for all will bring fraternity. And the moment equality and fraternity comes, then I'm liberal in my mind. Mental liberty is the most important liberty that one should have. A sound mind is, is, the, is the thing that we, we should look forward to in today's world probably. Then he said, life should be great rather than long. Yes, every day people pray for long life, but what's the use of long life if I cannot do something, something for my country people, something for my fellow men, something for my neighborhood and, and for the downtrodden. It makes no sense, my living a long life, my earning a lot of money for myself and not for others. So, you know, these, these are almost the guidelines. I can say th these could be taken as commandments, which we can all follow up in life. Then he says, we must stand on our feet and, and fight as best as we can for our rights. Power and prestige will come to you through struggle. Yes, we have to stand on our feet. We have to make ourselves strong. If we are not strong, then, we cannot expect others to become strong and the people whom we lead. He believed that caste system and democracy cannot exist. And this belief is now part of the Indian constitution, which states that there can be no discrimination on the basis of caste and language. Uh, a little anecdote, and again, I would like to share with my students because sir, my students are there. I don't know if I'm boring you with my talks. Am I boring you, sir? Can no, you hear no, me, no, sir? Please, sir? It is good that you are uh, uh, so passionate about it. Yes, uh, yes, I am passionate, welcome. sir. No, I believe in passion in my work, sir, and in my thoughts, deeds, and actions, sir. Very because nice. without passion, life does not exist. So yes, you see, sir. once it seems, my dear students, please listen. Once he was caught you know, eating a loaf of bread in the library in London. This is an incident that happened in London. When he told, uh, and he was caught by a Jew librarian. He was very strict. And when the Jew asked him, why are you eating in the library? He said, sir, I cannot afford to eat in the cafeteria because it's so expensive. I come from a very poor family. And that very sentence, you know, changed the heart of the Jew librarian. And he said, from tomorrow, you need not, you need not eat in the cafeteria. You need not eat in the librarian. You come in the library, you come to my room and I will share my lunch with you. So you see with his, with his, 
small little emotional word which touched the 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 hard-hearted librarian you know he has managed to change people you know in in his own uh, you know uh, soft and you know emotional ways probably and uh, not only emotional words practical words they were then uh, ab about him being you have also spoken about he being ostracized yes uh, the incident where you know the, both the brothers were traveling in the cart because they were supposed to go and meet their father and when they sat in the cart the cartman when they came when he came to know that these two boys belong to a low, car, low caste he threw him he threw them out of the cart saying that you you have polluted my cart and what did they do and what did he made made them do he, he this cartman made these two boys carry the cart with the cartman sitting on the cart you can see with so much of oppression and I, 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 I salute this man for his resilience that after all this ostracizing, after all this oppression, he came up to this life and to this stage that today, after 130 years, we still remember him and some of us are still following his way of life and, and his teachings. So I, I can really go on and on and on, but I don't really want to take much of your time. So thank you so very much that you have joined us. And I'm sure my students have learned a lot and I have learned a lot from you, sir. You are a wonderful narrator. You have kept us glued to the screen, you know, till the end. Sir, I would love if you, if you come to our college again, personally, let's hope this COVID thing will go off. You will come and, you know, give a talk to us live. I would love to listen to you live. In fact, when my teachers told me, you know, you have to passionate, you talk of passion in me, you have to, I have to, to passionate teachers here, Shimre and Mantre, you know, the way they spoke about you, you know, I said, yes, I want this gentleman to come and speak to my students so that he will transfer some of his passions to my students. Thank you so very much, sir, for, for sparing your time with us. And uh, we will see you sooner, sir. Thank you so very much, sir. And uh, respected you. vice principals, thank, thank you, sir. Uh, respected vice principals, thank you for being with us. Esteemed teachers, thank you for giving a patient uh, hearing. Dear students, I'm sure you have a lot to take away from this wonderful talk of Dr. Shrikant and, and practice in life. And please struggle. If you struggle, you become pure. You know, gold, the more it is burnt, the purer it is shined. The purer it, is shi the purer it shines. So please do not, do not be scared of any, any adversities because adversities can be turned into opportunities. And uh, the non-teaching staff, Thank you for all the help you have given me. And uh, so I, I, I will end with these few words. Thank you so much, sir. So I will Thank meet you in person you. one day. Yes. Sir, another thing I want to tell you, uh, please wish uh, your, your Madam Sir Mala, uh, 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 Madam Mala for me. She's there, sir. Can she come to this? Mala, you want to come? Uh, Mala, he's uh, engaging in a class. Oh, okay, sir. Us. Okay, sir. In fact, we are good associates. We know each other. Please wish her for me. Yeah. And I also wish all the best for your daughter, sir. Thank you so very much, sir. Good day, sir. Oh, thank, thank you, you sir. Thank you mm -hmm. for making nice. this celebration a great celebration, sir. Thank you so much. Right. Now, thank I you, want that you should uh, uh, go on having such kind of meetings. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Different people so that yes. uh, the students get to know about... Uh, the contributions of many eh? yes sir Great yes sir man. i'm i'm determined i'm sanguine that i'm i'm going to do i'm going to you know uh, uh, make these awareness classes these guest lectures by 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 you know eminent people like you all so that you know even we get even even we do not know so much sir uh, we get to know people and and we, we become aware about you know what what our forefathers did what those people those freedom fighters did and we continue their legacy we do not and take it as a cake and eat it up, sir. And uh, yes. give opportunities for students to talk because they should uh, not yes, only sir. listen, they should also be participants. Yes, sir. Hmm? Yes, sir. In fact, you see, the, the, you see, that's why I wanted a live one, sir. But you know, this this incident in Shillong College. So you know, then I got scared. I said, okay, then let, let it be 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 an offline rather than an online, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, you want to see. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Uh, yes, sir, I would like here. to see my friend. If you want to see huh. again. So Hi, Mala. Mala. <laughs> yeah, hey, I'm, I'm Sabita. Oh, Sabita. Yeah, how are you? Hi, how are you? Fine. What about you? 
Uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm doing good. And you know, it was so wonderful to listen to your husband. You know, I, I've been really looking forward to listen to him. He's such a learned man and he has taught us so many things. You know, you're blessed. Let me tell you, you're blessed to have a husband like him, you know, who's so learned. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. No, no. I'm no. I'm sure. Even he's blessed to have a wife like you. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, how are you doing? Yeah, fine. How are you doing? Yes, I yeah, I know. They're I busy know. classes and what else? COVID yeah, is yeah. again increasing. Yeah, I know. I know. We are all very busy. I know. It's nice seeing you. You know, it's so wonderful. I, I feel as though I feel as though you know I, I'm back to your house probably. Really, you're missing all the interactions. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I really. Know, I know. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Uh, okay. Next time. Okay. okay. Really and with nice. the English department also, we'll have something. Okay. Get ready. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah, so I, I'm, 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 you know, I'm passionate. I told Sarah I'm passionate about my work and, and I'm getting you mentally ready so that, you know, we'll have a program in the college. Okay. Okay, Mala. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank See you so you much. Yeah. Have a good day. Have a good day. Yeah, thank you. I should have asked you to sleep. Yeah. I think I'm actually.